Uh-huh. Yeah. No. 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 What? Wesker? No. No, the D virus would not be more powerful than the C virus. That doesn't even make sense. How can you say something like that? No. No. Yeah, Wesker, listen, I, I have so I have something to do, okay? I yeah. Yeah, I need to record something. Yeah. Yeah for YouTube. No, no. Hey Yeah, I know. Listen. No, I will not call you sexy Wesky. We've been over this. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I no. Listen. Yeah, I will bring you the sample. I know. Yeah, I, I'll call you back. I'll call you later, okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah, bye. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh my god. The camera wasn't on, was on all the time, wasn't it? Ouch. This is kind of awkward. Well, let's make it short then. Um, hey guys, this is Agent Theo. Uh, now, if you've seen my Resident Evil 6 demo playthroughs, uh, I'm sure you've heard me mentioning something about a review. And that's what we're here for today, kids. That's what we're gonna talk about. Um, so yeah. Uh, now, I'm not gonna be talking about the storyline, what actually happens in the demos, because my videos pretty much cover that. Or, if you want to experience it for yourself, you can always download the, the demo from either the PlayStation Network or Xbox Live, um, since it is public. I'm not sure if you do need the uh, the Xbox Live Gold membership though, because... Uh, yeah, I just don't know. You'll have to figure that out for yourself. <laughs> now, where do we start, you might wonder? Well, from the beginning. <laughs> no. Um, what I did is kind of like a mini research project, I guess. I. Um, I looked around to see what what the fan base generally thought of the the demo, and the general consensus so far seems to be that the camera is too close to the character, or that the character is too close to the camera. <laughs> it depends on how you view it. Um, so yeah, I figured that would be a nice start because um, well, I'm gonna be going over my impressions, the good ones, the not so good ones, but. Hey, we need to start somewhere, right? So, here it is. Hope you guys enjoy. Although the camera is a bit on the small side, or rather, the character is a bit on the big side in Resident Evil 6, I gotta say that that was rarely, or never, one of the actual issues for me during combat. My issue was that it was really hard for me to see some of the enemies, at least in Leon's scenario. The zombies seemed to melt into the shadows in a lot of places, not saying that's bad, it can be positive, adds atmosphere and quite a few jump scares, but I feel like a total idiot when sliding past a zombie in the dark and then getting bitten. And I've heard others complaining about this too, so it can't just be my poor eyesight. My biggest gripe with Leon's scenario is that even though it is clearly meant for a certain kind of audience, a lot of the key elements from the action style of Resident Evil games are still intact, such as the door opening systems where two people need to be present in order to kick in a door as if in some adrenaline pumped action movie. Maybe I'm demanding too much, but I feel like if they're going to make a certain kind of scenario appeal to a certain kind of audience, maybe they could have taken it one step ahead, such as reintroducing the classic door opening systems of Resident Evil as a nod to the older fans of the series. I'm not even sure if this would be technically possible, and I'm not even sure this is something that should be done, because the game obviously has its style and it does need to keep its integrity, but it is an idea nonetheless. Actions such as the one I mentioned earlier really take away from the slow-paced horror that this scenario is supposed to represent. Another thing that I found interesting to note about Leon's scenario is that while I was on the campus of this Ivy University, I found myself many times asking where the hell I even am, and I actually have to remind myself that I am at a university purely from knowledge. 
What I'm trying to say here is that the area we're in doesn't really make you feel like you're at a campus. Not a current one, anyway. Maybe one abandoned about, oh, 30 years ago. The design feels a little old, a little stale, and they could have added a little more flavor details in the background, such as stumbling across a dead couple who left us one last message. Maybe cheesy, but I feel it does add flavor. Bottom line is, make the university look and feel like a university. I've been to a few, and this one has failed to strike me as being a realistic one. Neon Scenario pays some interesting tribute to the older Resident Evil games, such as the cop car sequence, and some hallways in the campus look suspiciously a lot like those right before the helipad in the RPD. Before it was blown sky high, that is. Chris's scenario is action-packed, and that is a heavy understatement. A lot of the older fans, as well as people who simply aren't into that kind of genre, might be dismayed. I have to say the gameplay in that segment reminded me a lot of Gears of War for some reason. There's a lot going on in Chris's scenario. There's shouting in Serbian and English. The camera is shaking. There's explosions, action, and shooting everywhere. Sometimes it gets a little bit confusing and, quite frankly, overwhelming. However, I do want to stress that what might very well redeem Chris's scenario, even for the older fans, is the storyline. At the start, we're shown that Chris is very passionate about his role in the BSAA and pretty much promises to keep his team together, safe and whack, at all times. There's a lot of emotions in the air, even though the theme is, like I've said many times, action. Quite frankly, I found the rest of the team quite amiable straight away, which is very unusual for me. But amidst all that action and those strong emotions of camaraderie, a pretty damn good guess is that shit is going to hit the fan for Chris and his team very, very soon. And since you care for these characters, it will leave a lot of us pretty impressed in the end, I'm sure. Jake's scenario was action, but in a smaller scale, which personally suited me better. Not much to say about that scenario. We get a glimpse of Ada, or Carla. Hmm. We get to play as Sherry and Jake, and he's just golden, by the way. It's enough to say that it's a solid scenario with a mixture of all of the genres and a something little extra that I can't quite put my finger on. Maybe it's that whole Chinese Oriental theme. One thing that I found particularly annoying about this scenario, though, is the enemies that constantly knock you down, pretty much spamming it, I'd say. Very reminiscent of how the hunters were in Orc before it was patched. So I really hope that Capcom fixed that. More generally about the game, I want to briefly go over the monsters. Obviously the equivalent of the Magini and the Ganadas have returned, to Chris's and Jake's scenarios at least, while Leon gets the traditional zombies. The zombies at one point, however, become really fast, almost as fast as a sprinting Magini, which makes me wonder if this is even intentional as an effect of the C-Virus, or simply a bug. A lot of fans have eagerly been awaiting the real return of zombies, but ironically enough, now that we do have them back, I've heard several cases where people tend to think they're boring. Well, hallelujah, people! What did you expect? After facing other enemies in the RE franchise for so many years now, it's pretty safe to say that we have to reaccustom ourselves. The new monsters, from what we see in this demo anyway, feel a bit uninspired and bland. Random hunks of flesh that look a little like an alien and want to attack you? We've seen it before. I understand this might be the theme of the C-Virus or something, and obviously there's exceptions and creatures that are not included in the demo that instead do stand out, like the Lepotitsa for instance, but so far the generic and bland enemies don't quite cut it in my opinion. Collision detection seems to work fine for the most part. 
although there were a few cases where I could have sworn that some bullets were clean hits and went through zombies without doing any damage. It's definitely more responsive than what I expected it to be though. And the same goes for the controls in general. Very responsive, I'd say. Good job, Capcom. The AI is actually pretty good. I haven't seen any issues with it, except some random thanks from Jake at times, and a few AI soldiers not moving during combat in Chris's scenario. AI saved my ass a few times, I gotta admit. I'm glad that you can apparently replace the Hutton character to the side on the screen that you prefer, because it really does make it easier for some people in that it actually improves visibility. I also know that you can change your crosshair to a laser sight, which I should have done, not to mention changed its color. You can choose to turn off the HUD display from what I understand via the options icon display. You can do some minor control adjustments such as how to attack, pick up items, whether to reload automatically or manually, aiming preferences, Y and X axis inversion, and more. Visually, this game looks stunning, especially the effort and detail put into the characters, their facial expressions, where you get to see their facial expressions actually change and even their hair bob as they move or turn. Heck, this game even looks stunning in SD, with almost HD-like quality on a good monitor. The textures are for the most part great, although there were some walls or posters or details on things that looked rather sloppy for an otherwise very refined HD game. The audio and music is heavenly, especially in a set of turtle beaches. Voice acting is also sublime. There were a few scores from the soundtrack on the demo that really struck me as very RE-esque, which I'm sure people will appreciate. But we need to keep in mind that this is only a demo, so obviously they've not showcased some of their best stuff. Well, let's hope they haven't, anyway. And last but not least, the menus. They look stunning. I love the purplish blue theme to the whole game, and upon choosing a scenario, each of the characters seems to have their own style to the menu. Not in text, but in terms of what appears in the background, such as shadows of various monsters in various locations. I love the actual character selection menus too, and they all looked great. From pose to downright facial expressions that the characters in them had. I do have one big issue with this game however, but trust me this is nothing new with Resident Evil 6, and it's generally something I have issues with in all modern games. The checkpoint systems really ruin a game's fun factor in my opinion. There's hardly any penalty involved at all in dying. I'm not saying I only want incredibly difficult games that feel more like a chore to complete, but the levels of easy that today's gaming companies take their games to have never been higher. It feels more like you're going through the motions while playing a game nowadays, whereas in the past you could feel a much bigger sense of accomplishment for completing a certain level or mission. You guys can tell me what you think. Do you agree that games have become too easy, or do you feel that they're just fine the way they are? While we may have a lot of impressions, both good and bad, about Resident Evil 6, we need to keep in mind that this is still only a demo. So we do need to give the game a chance before we actually pass judgement. Especially considering the length of Resident Evil 6 that we've been promised, we're bound to be getting a lot more than we bargained for. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I think we've just about covered everything I wanted to talk about today. If I miss something, uh, I really apologize, but even I forget things sometimes. Um, even though my opinions are pretty mixed on, res um, on some of the aspects of Res Resident Evil 6, as you've probably seen by my commentary, I do think that Resident Evil 6 will be quite a success. Uh, I understand that the fans are very torn about what Capcom is doing since at one point I think they did mention they're not going to be returning to real survival horror. 
But in all, in all honesty, you can't really expect the series to stay the same. If nothing else, we can view them as really fond classics, but the series didn't need to move on. Because as the technology and skills of the gaming companies advance, so do the games. We can't really do anything about that. Um, now, like I said, the opinions are probably going to be very mixed, because Resident Evil 6 will be trying to cater to quite a wide uh, fan base, to be honest. There's the action junkies, there's the ones in the middle, and then there's the survival horror enthusiasts. Um, I honestly think most of us will be happy in some way. We're probably not expecting some miracle or anything, but who knows, maybe Resident Evil 6 will surprise us all, uh, since Capcom really have gone out of the way, out of the way to advertise Resident Evil a lot. I don't think any Resident Evil game has ever been ad advertised as much as this one, honestly. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens on October 2nd. Uh, I have actually ordered the, uh, the Collector's Edition Resident Evil 6, uh, and I will be doing an unboxing video of this on my YouTube channel, so I hope that my current subscribers will watch it with me, and I hope that if you're new that you do subscribe, because I really want you to enjoy this with me. Uh, opening, unboxing something like this is a very special moment, and I really want to share it with you guys. Um, yeah, that pretty much says it. I really hope you subscribe, and I hope you decide to watch some more of my videos, because there's definitely a lot gonna be... There's definitely a lot that's gonna be happening. Alright. Thanks so much for watching. Agent Dio out.